So, what are you doing today, Linda? <laughs> well, I need to ask. Um, last time I did the video, I uh, cut a paper stencil and used it as a circular shape with the gel plague. Uh, so I'm actually, I mentioned that you can cut the shape of the stencil into any uh, shape that you want. So I've actually prepared a few different shaped stencils. But also this round thing here is, um, I've melted two previously homemade gel plates down together and shoved them in a saucepan and left them there to dry. So it's a little bit deeper on one side than it is on the other. Plus it got a little bit bent somehow. Um, and I haven't actually tried it yet, so I'm doing that as well. So we'll take a monoprint. I'll take a monoprint. It's a slightly sunnier, warmer day than it was last time, but we'll see how, how it goes. So just to recap the process, I'm going to coat the roller in quite a, it's going to be quite a thin coat because it's easier to add more than take it off, if you know what I mean. Um, and I haven't tried using this gel plate. I just, oops. I that way. I just, um, sorry. Sometimes you get blobs in your ink and that's, you don't want blobs in your ink because then they get in your print. So I'll get rid of that. Um, yeah, so I didn't try, I haven't tested this at all, and that's basically, this is whatever's come off the bottom of the frying, uh, the saucepan, so it's maybe not as flat as I thought it was, but it doesn't really matter because I'll take a few prints, and each time when you take a monoprint and you can take a ghost, you get less and less ink. So I've made a paper stencil and a paper mask. And the difference between a stencil and a mask is always quite confusing, but I'm going to take this glove off. Um, so I did some drawings and then I'm not very good at cutting out around my lines, so my lines actually don't quite work out. So this is the stencil and this, what's left, is the mask, so the bit with gaps in it. There's a couple of bits left on there because I've got some actual holes here. Um, and when I do this, I often turn it over because then you get much more of a sense of what you're looking at because it's just a shape and you don't have any drawn lines on it then. So I'm just going to... Oh, I hope it's the right size. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Yeah, okay, so that fits. So I'm just going to pull a print. So it's going to be a straightforward monoprint onto a piece of uh, photocopy paper. And also, last time I did this, I was looking around for my roller, and I've now brought the roller, but I'm not convinced that the roller is going to give me any better print because you can end up squashing it. So I'm just going to press it really lightly and we'll have a look. Like I say, I haven't used this plate before, this gel. I mean, I have, but only in two other forms, two thin forms. Um, so let's have a look. Okay. So, because there's quite a lot of ink left on there, I'm going to take a ghost. Um, I'm going to use the slightly more expensive paper which is this 60s paper that I have used quite a lot before and I'm going to do a hand pressed print this time so this is a ghost print of the monoprint and it's just picking up whatever is left on the plate and I like to do as many ghosts as I can because oops I'll do it that way so you can see because it means you can use it as a background for something else. So that's quite useful. 
So I'm going to go through a few of these, which is basically, this is a paper mask, and I'm going to now turn it into a paper um, plate, just by lifting it, hoping it doesn't rip. Uh, just by lifting it off the gel and you can begin to see it's leaving some marks in there and I'd quite like to see how they print. I'm just going to ease it off and try not to move the ink about too much. Okay, so I've now got a paper plate covered in ink and I've also got a gel plate with some residue. So I'm also going to take a print of that. So it's a second ghost. And let's see what happens. I'm not expecting too much off this. Also, uh, it's this kind of miracle that the paper is actually not too small to fit <laughs> for the plate, because I didn't, I didn't measure it before I did this. Okay, so I'm going to push a bit harder now because there's no other elements in there that can get squished and I could even we'll see what happens when I do this you can see it wrinkling um, so there could be a little bit of squidging but I figure it's potentially could work there could be something quite interesting that's nice thanks girl Right, so there's hardly any ink left on the gel, uh, but there is a little bit left on this paper. So I'm gonna um, see if I can get anything off the paper. It's quite absorbent paper and it's quite warm, so there won't be too much, but what I'm gonna do is print it on top of, radically, this, um, gel plate. Uh, nothing's dried, we're talking about a few minutes, I did it a few minutes ago and I'll try it with a pre uh, roller, that's what it's called. Well, that's what it's called in the UK anyway. Right, and I can see it's bubbling so I know the paper's a little bit wetter because it's absorbed a bit more ink, so I'm not going to push it too much with the roller. Right, let's see what we got. Okay, so not that much difference. There's a little, there's a few little marks in there that weren't visible before. And actually, I don't know what was there before. But again, it's quite quite interesting, quite useful. 